to withdraw. Well, 48 bodies of the 48 boys left were found inside the church. They had fought to the death rather than actually uh, betray the orders that they have been given to hold the town. Um, and that's how they fought all the way through the town. Um, there is a large number of SS here, in excess of a thousand. Generally, the SS guys, not all of them, but generally they're ranked in the STRR, just so that you can differentiate. Also don't forget, the bulk of the men in here are conscripts by 1944. The bulk of these don't want to be here. We've got young boys, we've got old men. Old men by soldiers' standards, 35 to 45 year olds. And of course, we've also got Eastern troops that are fighting for the German army. And then most of those are only here to save themselves from dying in the German prisoner of war camps. Um, now, in terms of the trees that you saw lining the route, and the trees around the cemetery, and the trees in the centre, they're what uh, are called a peace garden. So German individuals and companies today pay the German War Graves Commission a donation, and the money is then used for three things. Firstly, obviously, to plant the tree. Secondly, to maintain the current site, and obviously they've got plenty of them. Uh, and thirdly, to try and trace the bodies of 2.2 million German soldiers who are still missing on the Russian front. Now they are finding them, uh, the problem is that knife, fork and spoon on eBay is $50. Um, so unfortunately many of the bodies there are not being identified here. Um, the mound in the centre here is a mass grave that holds just short of 300 bodies but more than 2,000 body parts and that's because of our reliance upon firepower to try and get the Germans out of the Bokash countryside here. And the statue on the top is a grieving mother and father. Now we are going to build on, uh, on, on information but I'm going to head over there to a couple of interesting graves and then when I've done that, I'm going to give you a bit of time to wander around. You can actually get up the back of the mound, there's some steps up there, and from up there you can get some fantastic photos. Yet he's still in captivity in 49. That tells me he had to be a believer, and it pretty much confirms for me he's 12th SS, Hitler Youth Division. Now, what happened with Heinz Nibel is after a period of time, they decided that what might stabilise him mentally a little bit is to put him to work on a farm and he can live there. So he's now working for a French farmer. Uh, every day he would have to check in, um, but he's, he's building up a relationship with his family and of course it's normalising him. Now eventually, on the 24th of March 1949, after almost five years of captivity by us, he now has finally got his train ticket home and it's for the 25th of March. Now on the morning of the 25th of March, he wakes up in the farmhouse, looks out of the window of, his, um, of the farmhouse and the farmer that he is now really good friends with is raking in all the leaves and the broken branches from the winter in his garden. Heinz Nibel quickly puts his clothes on, he goes outside and he says, look, my train isn't until this afternoon, just let me do this one last task for you as a, as a, as a last thank you. So, he uh, goes out into the garden, carries on building the pile up of all the leaves and twigs, lights it, unexploded bomb directly underneath. On the day he was due to go home, he dies. Um, now that's as much as I'm going to say here guys, but I'm just going to give you 20 minutes to wander around and take it all in. And if you want to go to the visitor's centre, feel free. Um, I've got 20 past now, bang on the button, so if we could meet back up at the minibus at 22, um, and then we're going to push on towards Point de Hop. Uh, but as I say, if you want to get some great photographs, the top of the mound uh, is the place to do it.